And then here's where things get really, really spicy. Yo, what's going on guys? Today I'm going to show you guys how to pivot from one comp to another. Uh, this game, I'm going to be going for Warlords because Warlords just got buffed, Katarina and Garen got buffed, and all the other comps got nerfed. Pretty much every good comp, that is. So, I really want to try this Warlord comp, and you'll see here that I'm trying really hard to get it until like the very last moment where I pivot into something else. So if you guys are wondering how do you pivot into other compositions, and like, what do you do if you don't get what units you want? This game will go over all of that. We'll be building flexible items the whole time. And you'll see in this first shop here, we get this Garen Warlord Chosen. So obviously that is one of the best ones if you want to start going for Warlords right away. The only one that's better is Warlord Nidalee, but we don't get that. And the reason why this is good is because he's a frontline unit and obviously if you're going Warlords, you want Warlord Chosen. So other people have been telling me, hey, like, I know you like forcing comps a lot and uh, but you can't really say that you force a composition if you get the chosen early because like that's just a lucky game. Well, a lot of times it isn't always that simple because a lot of times you get the chosen early and you don't end up getting the composition. So we're going to go into exactly how to deal with that today. So here I have the sword and the rod. That is perfect for Gunblade for Katarina. So already I'm like, wow, this is like a really good Warlord game because I have one of the main items already. I just need a Quicksilver to really flesh out the build. And you guys should check out the latest builds on my website, bunnymuffins.lol, where I update a meta snapshot every single Friday, which shows every comp that's like really good in that certain patch. So, so to finish off here, I get a Chain Vest, which is interesting. Obviously, I'd want a Quicksilver component instead. However, Chain is still really good because I could build the early game item, which is Locket of the Iron Solari. It did get nerfed a little bit in the recent patch, but not to worry because it's still a really good item in the early game. They just nerfed its late game a little bit more. So I'm not really afraid of that much right now. What I want to do, however, is I want to level up because I have a strong chosen and I'm going to build an item. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here, sell this Tristana and pretty much just shove everyone in after that. I'm going to do two Teemos. I'd prefer to get the Braum, but I don't want to sell one of the Teemos to play Braum instead. So I did make a minor mistake here. I shouldn't have bought the Teemo in my shop. I should have bought Braum instead. Then after I win, buy the second Teemo and play like that. The guy we're facing is open for He has 20 gold at the start of the game. That's completely crazy. That's He's going to have like one of the biggest econs. So let's remember this guy's name, Gian John Cook. Let's see how well he does because... That is a ton of gold, and he's going to get every item he wants because he's going to be first pick every carousel. So in the shop here, I get super lucky. I get that Teemo, so it's at this point where I'm like, okay, I have a strong frontliner, I have a strong backliner. Let's make Locket because uh, we're going to start win streaking. I don't think anyone's going to be able to contest us on this win streak, so I'm going to backline everyone and then just build the Locket. So even though I really like Hextech Gunblade on the... So even though I really like Hextech Gunblade on the Katarina... I don't really care about that anymore because I'm just going to build this locket and stay flexible because with this start, if I win streak throughout this entire stage, I can go into anything. I don't have to go for specific builds. And because I have a sword, sword kind of fits into everything because you could just build a guardian angel or a Zeke's herald to still stay flexible. So uh, I'm going to try to aim around that, but I'm still trying to go for Katarina carry. So with that in mind, I still want to pick up Gunblade, still want to pick up Quicksilver Sash components. So we'll just wait and see what we get on Carousel. We will be last pick. So it does not really give us that much choice anyways. Uh, so in this shop here, nothing much to do. So we're just going to go ahead and skip. And this guy here, he is level 4. I guess everyone's level 4 at this point. Uh, he is not that strong. He's got one 2-star. He's got Keepers or something like that. And that's it. And a random Nasus. I think he wanted to do like the Keeper Cultist start. That's a really good start right now, by the way, guys. So if you ever do get like Chosen Keeper or any Chosen Cultist, I really do recommend playing those because in the early game... 
You're going to be stomping on everyone, pretty much. All right, we're on Carousel right now. Again, we would want the Rod because uh, that's really good on Katarina. However, don't get that because we're last pick. It's either Belt or Negatron. So I could get, grab the Belt to build a Zeke's, but I want to build the Katarina items instead because I have a great Warlord start. Uh, so I opt to go for the Negatron instead. On this next shop here, we do get a Lucky Lantern. Let's see what we get here. We get a Reforger and another Negatron. Unlucky because now we have an extra Negatron that we didn't really want. So right off the bat, not the best items for us so far. But we're on a win streak. We level up. And I'm actually going to play this extra Akali that I got, even though she doesn't have any synergies. Akali is a very strong champion in the early game, and you'll see why in just a second. So look at this fight here. You see the brand isolated in the back, and just look how quickly this Akali takes apart that brand uh, with no item. She has a Negatron Cloak, but that's not giving her any attack damage stats, and pretty much their main carry or their main damage dealer in the back line, their only two-star damage dealer, just got deleted in a couple of seconds. It's super, super strong. Uh, and yeah, I think we make quick work of the Shibana right after this. Or actually, it's a little closer than I thought, because he does have the Dragon Soul buff, but um, if we didn't take care of that brand super, super quickly, maybe the game is a little different. Uh, so even without synergies, that's what she can do. Imagine if she does have synergies in the early game. It gets even crazier. So on this next shot, we don't really need anything here. Uh, Teemo, we already have. We could go for like the Wukong pair, but we already have the Braum out, so I'd rather have him level 1 instead of the Wukong. Do keep in mind, we do need to get rid of this Nidalee with the sword on her eventually. Um, but right now, I want to keep her out because we do have wins from the Warlord buff. So she is stronger than this Nidalee that I have on the bench. And again, look at this Akali. In combination with the Nidalee Spears, is able to take out both the backliner and the tank of Garen that were protecting um, all the backline damage dealers from this guy. So pretty interesting there. Akali, super, super strong early game, even without synergies. I'm not saying player all the time, but if you have like just a random slot to put someone in, might as well give her a try. So it's at this point where I sell my extra Nidalee, buy a new one, and put her on the board. And again, that's just because I don't want to have the sword on my Nidalee. So one other thing, Warlords on the neutral rounds, they do get a stack. So I'm going to swap out my entire team to make sure I get the most uh, stat buffs on my Warlord units. All right, so we get a glove here and some gold. And what comes on this last guy? Uh, another glove. So we do get a Quicksilver, which is pretty nice. Uh, we don't get any other components that are that useful to us. We really wanted the Rod, but don't get that there. Luckily, we get a Nidalee too. And since we only have five Warlords, I think I'm going to put my old team back in play, which is the Braum and the Akali. I'm also going to build a Quicksilver Sash because pretty much no matter what comp I'm going, it's going to be useful. So from this spot here, we have a lot of Swords. Or like we have one sword and a crit and another Negatron. We do have a Reforger, which we could use. So I'm thinking we could go into the Akali build if we get a Rod, build a Gunblade. Or we could go into Olaf builds and use a Quicksilver Sash on Trindomir. Or we could still play Kale because we have a Locket and a Quicksilver for our Kale. Uh, so pretty much a lot of different options are open still. And uh, that's the great thing about building stuff like Locket. You could go into any composition. Even though I want to go Warlords and I'm, I really am trying to force Warlords from this spot... I can still play other things just because my items are still semi-flexible. Let's see if we're able to finish this guy off here, though. Ah, I think if I remember correctly, we do lose this one for the streak, so a little unlucky. Maybe if I put a sword on Teemo, we might have beat him and maintained our win streak, which is pretty big. That's a lot of gold. We get three bonus gold every win that we get, and we're just missing out on that because we didn't win that one round. So a little... A little unfortunate there. Maybe it's a misplay. Maybe I should have leveled up on 3-1. Oftentimes when I am win streaking, I do level up on 3-1 because not a lot of other people will. And it's just like a free win streak, even though you like level suboptimally because it's off curve. But no one else was win streaking at the time. So I thought that no one else would be strong enough. But maybe I should have scouted and uh, maybe I could have avoided that if I did that. But a little unlucky. Let's just get back into the game. I end up putting in six Warlords. Six Warlords, super, super strong at this point in the game. Any six synergy during stage three is completely insane. Like six Keeper, uh, six Warlord, six Cultist. Six Cultist is probably the best one. Uh, they're completely nuts at this point, and yeah, we're just abusing that fact right now. So in this next shop, just pick up the Vi. Uh, we could get back up to 50 if we sell these Garens. I am holding on to extra Garens because I do plan on selling the Garen we have on the board because... He's the Chosen unit, and I want to get a more expensive Chosen unit later in the game. All right, this guy's got a Jeweled Gauntlet Nasus, Siphoner Vlad, I'm assuming, or maybe Cultus Vlad. So he's got Cultus and Siphoner right now. Interesting combo. I've never really done that myself in the early game, but 
I guess that's just all he had during this game, so maybe that's why we're seeing it now. But we're able to make quick work of that. Almost got all our guys. Nasus is so awkward. I was playing Nasus earlier today, and he left everyone at one health. And I'm talking everyone as in like five people, just how you saw here. And like I took 10 damage a turn. I was like, maybe if I had a little bit more ability power on him, I'd be able to clean up every fight and win every fight. But Nasus is one of those champions where like the thresholds for whether he kills a unit or doesn't kill a unit are incredibly huge. So here I did want the rod, that got taken. Instead, I'm gonna go for the chain vest because you could build Titan's Resolve on Katarina and that's the best third item, I'd say. After Quicksilver and then Gunblade, third item, Titan's Resolve, it's gonna be the best item combination. The reason why is because Titan's Resolve gets a stack whenever you critically strike or whenever you take damage. And when Kat's spinning with the Assassin buff, she's gonna be critting a ton. So she's gonna get a ton of resistances and a ton of damage with that item combination. Unfortunately, we're at an awkward point where we have four items and we can't really build anything. If I was going to be a little more flexible, I could build Guardian Angel and just get out of Warlords, but I really wanted to make Warlords work because I do have an early Katarina. He's going to get a lot of stacks, I'm win streaking, and I have six Warlords already, so I really wanted to make it work. I did level up to level 7 because I thought I could keep a win streak, but we face this Diana 3 guy. I honestly forgot if we won this match or not. It definitely will be close because Diana 3 at this point in the game is really, really strong, even though he doesn't have any Tristana items. Actually, we do we win this? It's going to be close. Does Nidalee get a God Spear? Oh, man. Uh, that's really unfortunate. We're level 7, he's level 5, and it's probably because we have so many items on our bench, I'm guessing. That is making it a little rough, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, so if you're playing more flexible, you slam the GA. You could still play Kale or Olaf, but it makes your Katarina a little weaker, so Warlords are a little more out of the question if you do that. I could also reforge the Negatron, because Negatron can turn into a lot of different stuff that I could slam an item on right now. For example, if I get a tier, I could build a Hand of Justice on Katarina. If I get a Rod, obviously the Gunblade. And if I get a bow, I could build Titan's Resolve on her. So maybe I should have reforged the Negatron right away. I was thinking since I'm 92 health, I could be a little greedier. But if I was like maybe this guy or this guy, the 42 or 38 health guy, maybe I'd do a reforge much quicker than I do in this game. This guy has Team 2 chosen, I'm assuming for Spirit. Uh, are we able to pull this one off? Okay, yeah, it seems like we're able to thwart him. It was mainly the other guy with the Tristana. That Tristana build, by the way, still really, really good. And... The best part about it, a lot fewer people are going for it because it got nerfed. So before it was in an awkward state where two or three people were going for the same Tristana build. But by nerfing the comp, ironically, they actually buffed it. Because now when only one person goes for it, they're going to be hitting everything and they're going to be really strong. It's kind of like a weird balance in TFT. It's like some games, two people are going to go for it. And some games, only one person goes for it. And that fact alone will change how strong the comp is. So it's a little awkward in that aspect, so if you do plan on playing that composition, be ready to know when to pivot and how to pivot. Uh, I'll be releasing a video on that hopefully later this week, but here we get a sword and a belt and another belt. So it's at this point where I'm like, dang, that is not good because I didn't get a single item that I wanted. I wanted a rod, I wanted a bow, I wanted a tier. Any of those could have built an item, but now I'm in this really awkward slot, so I'm like, all right. I'm definitely building one Zeke's because I can't use two belts or anything else. And then I'll keep this sword still open for that Hextech Gunblade on Katarina. I really wanted that because at this point in the game, I'm like winning every round. I could greed my items a little longer. But if you are playing for serious, I definitely slammed this second Zeke's. Especially after that reforge, I got another glove, which is like, again, a component I really didn't want. I needed three of the seven components. I just didn't get any of them from like four different items. It's, it's really unlucky. I just really wanted to slam at least like two items there if I get like three or four items. I, I forgot how many we got, but it was a lot. Uh, yeah, so now it's a little awkward. With the glove, maybe we could go for a shroud. But I again, I want to keep the options open for the uh, perfect item Katarina because if you do get three-star Katarina, nine warlords with perfect items, there is a super high chance you're going to win the game in like 99% of your lobbies because it is just unstoppable. So that's what I was really going for here because, again, I'm at 92 health. And, yeah, there's not really too much else to look for. So I'm just going to power level to level 8. I'm not going to do it yet because, again, high health means I don't have to roll. If you are 50 life at this point in the game at stage 4-2... You bet your ass you're going to be rolling down to at least 20 because you are going to be so weak if you don't and you're going to lose 
one or two games in this round and then like you get unlucky in stage five once and you're out of the game so you really gotta be careful man this guy's got three star aurelia she did get buffed i still don't think it's worth going for but if you get it for free like if you load a dice and get a ton of aurelias like why not take it but he seems to get his whole divine comp online he has two chalices with really good item kale with the three star aurelia that is actually insane he's gonna do pretty well oh that's the guy we were talking about before who had the really big uh, economy. He is at 30 life, so he does have to be careful. So we're going to go to level 8 after this carousel. And yeah, these items are... I don't know what to do with these. Like, I build the Zeeks because I'm like... I should have built it two turns ago, obviously, because you get more value out of it. But yeah, I don't think they're turning into anything else. I was thinking since I'm going to be in a high pick for this round, since I have a lot of health, uh, so I'm probably going to be last pick. I could just get a tier, and no one really takes tier, so I could just build a Hand of Justice on Katarina instead of the Hexsec Gunblade. Um, but let's see what happens in this fight. This guy's Brand chosen with the Shivana. Oh, and a Dragon Claw. That is very interesting. A lot of people are building Dragon Claw, I'm noticing. I guess there was the Negatron Cloak from the Lucky Lantern, so maybe that's why there are more of them this game. But I did notice that as I was playing this. I was like, man, like... There are a couple of Dragon Claws. Cat isn't so good into Dragon Claws, so maybe I could try for something else. But we are last pick, as I predicted, so we don't get a choice of our items. All right, so luckily we do end up getting this Aatrox with a tier. Tier was exactly what we wanted. We could slam the Hand of Justice on Katarina. It's like half a gun blade, right? Or 50% of the time, it works every time. So there is that, you know? Um, if you get, In case you guys don't know what Hand of Justice does, it gives, I think, 40% damage or 40% healing at a 50% rate. So it's one or the other, like 50% chance you get healing, 50% chance you get the damage roll. Uh, we get Keeper Zaya here, very interesting, but we just can't really take any of these. I guess we could have pivoted to Kale, but if I was gonna do a Kale pivot, I'd do something like a, what's it called? Um, an Executioner Zaya instead of the Keeper Zaya. Keeper Zaya isn't that bad. But it's just not like that great where I'll be like, okay, I'm going to pivot my whole comp even though I was like dead set on going for something else this game. Um, but yeah, I probably should pick up this Kale here. I guess I sell Callista in order to just make interest. But going Kale from this point, we don't have any bows, but we're very likely to get one on this Wraith camp. But if we don't get that, we only have a Quicksilver and a Hand of Justice. It's really not the best Kale. Uh, we do have two Zeeks, which is really good for her. So maybe it could be argued that I could have just gone Kale this game. It's really, really tough to say, but again, I'm tunneling. Maybe I shouldn't have, but now is when I'm like, okay, maybe I tunneled a bit too hard because I have the pike already. Even without the upgrade, I had a pike on my board. I have a Trindomir. I could just go Olaf because Quicksilver, really good item on Trindomir. And then Olaf, I have a Hand of Justice already and Locket's really good in the Slayer comp because everyone's frontline, so you get really good value out of the Locket. So I do a quick scout, see how many people are going for Olaf's and then I'm like, sorry, going for Trindomir's, and I'm like, all right, let me just pivot right now. And yeah, obviously I don't get the full swap in time. I'm running five Warlords. It's a little awkward, but I do get the Hand of Justice on him and the Double Zeeks on the, or and the Quicksilver on the Trindomir. Hopefully it's enough because, yeah, no, no Katarina this game. I really wanted to try Warlords because, again, they buff them. And look at this, another Dragon Claw here. So it's like tons of Dragon Claws in this lobby, unless it's the same guy and I'm not remembering correctly. Uh, like, it kind of makes sense not to go Katarina if you see a lot of those in your game. So instead, we switch to an attack damage composition, which obviously is not affected by the, what's it called, the Dragon Claws at all. But we get a Swain here. I'm going to buy the Zed, hopefully, so I get to six Slayers. Or I guess I'm only at five Slayer. Uh, so I probably should have bought the Zed, sold the Nidalee. So I guarantee making interest. Slight mistake there. I didn't remember that Zed's a Slayer, I'll be honest with you. I was still like in the midst of like thinking about all the transitioning before and like kind of confusing myself. But yeah, you see a chosen Olaf in your shop, you have decent items for it, just go ahead and take it. Unlucky because we get the rod here for Katarina, so we could have had Hand of Justice, uh, Quicksilver, and like a Gunblade for Katarina. It's a little unlucky, but you know, life happens sometimes, you know? Uh, so we roll down here because I really want the Trindomir 2 and I want to find the other Slayers. We find the 6 Slayer there, so we go ahead and swap that in. Pick out the Jarvan or the Nidalee. Nidalee's kind of useless. I should have taken out Nidalee now. I thought she was doing something, but I should have put in Braum for Dragon Soul and for Vanguard. Really, really strong components there. Um, 
So uh, Guardian Angel on Olaf, of course. You could go Infinity Edge. The other option was Infinity Edge with another Locket. That one's pretty good too. But I feel like Guardian Angel's just like so, so good on Olaf because he's on the front line. He's going to be taking a lot of damage. And it's kind of late game. Late game, you don't really want Lockets. So, um, I, I mean, there's still a fine item if you really need the tankiness. Like if you're playing this Spirit Tristana build, you will need the Locket. Like having two Lockets, completely amazing. But for me, it's like most of my guys are pretty tanky. I run a lot of melee units. So I'm not really that concerned about having extra Lockets because they did get nerfed and they're just not that great of an option in, in the late game. So I'd rather get the Guardian Angel on Olaf, which is obviously still a really good item. And then here's where things get really, really spicy. We get the Collector Olaf, and I've never had this item combination before. But I'm assuming it is probably one of the best things you could ever get on this Olaf. Reason is, he's going to be kill doing all the killing. So it's like anytime you have like a single unit carry, such as Kale, Olaf, uh, that use the stats on it really well, it gives critical strike and attack damage. So Olaf might be actually the best user of it. The only better user I can think of is Samira. Uh, it's going to be a really good item combination. It's going to give us a ton of gold. You guys will see in just a minute. Uh, actually, he didn't, he didn't get that much gold here because he got Zephyr and Trindamir kind of killed everything, but we did get three gold there. So what the item does, let's see if we read it here. The wearer executes enemies below 10% on hit and executions generate one gold. So it pretty much just means the enemy has 10% less health whenever we're playing Olaf, which that, that sounds pretty good, right? Like, would I rather have, like, a Last Whisper on my Trindamir? Probably, because Last Whisper is really good. If people run Vanguards, I might get stuck on them if I don't have a Last Whisper. But getting a Collector on Olaf, completely huge. Imagine waiting this whole time for Ornn and you get, like, a Blitzcrank hook instead. That's probably one of the worst feelings in the world. Um, I don't know if you guys have been there before, but a lot of times I play Ornn. I'm on a huge lose streak for some reason because I'm playing Ornn, uh, because Ornn's not the best fighter. And then... After all said and done, I intentionally feed for four rounds and then I get like a Blitzcrank hook and everyone has Quicksilver Sash. It's just like one of the worst feelings in the world. If you guys have ever had that in your own games, let me know down in the comments below and we could, I guess, like share in our agony. I don't know what the right word is, but we get four gold there. Man, getting Collector early in like stage five just means you have like infinite economy. I think it's one of the best items to get if you have like an attack damage carry because you are just going to be farming so much gold, going to level 9 very easily. And we pretty much have 2-star of everything. So, again, even though I really want to go for Warlords, you just see a very strong Chosen as something else, and you have to respect it, you have to go for it. Okay, in this carousel, I do want this Locket, but someone does end up taking it. I know I was trash-talking Locket earlier, but like honestly, these other items aren't really that great. So I guess here, I just go for a Sunfire in case someone has, like, a really big drain tank or something like that maybe like the healing reduction helps out a little bit the other option was frozen heart but i don't really have a holder for it i guess i could put it on pike maybe that was a better play i'm not really too sure they're both kind of like whatever items we get the samira there which is really nice she's not really like that needed but she's obviously going to be better than zed this guy's going talon talon got buffed too but yeah there's this siphoner in the game with like hexec gunblade morgana he might be healing a lot so like that's another reason why I was like, oh, maybe Sunfire Cape might be a little useful. But you guys can see here, like, look at this Olaf. One, two, three, four, five, six. I think we got seven gold. Maybe eight. Eight gold from that. That is that is just too much. I don't know. Like, I wonder what the most gold someone's collected in a game from Collector is. I'm sure Riot has, like, a statistic on that. And I'd be very interested to know if, like, maybe it happened in a Challenger lobby. Maybe it happened in a Bronze lobby. Who really knows? Because... It could be argued that like it might be easier to beat people in a bronze lobby, but maybe they people in bronze don't know how to get collector that early with Ornn. Uh, so maybe the highest gold gain from this item might be from Challenger. Who really knows? You also need like a two-star unit, which is pretty difficult to get. We were able to get that this game because we had a huge economy and we went to level eight and rolled there. We didn't need to roll on level seven because our health was high. So it was kind of like the best of both worlds where it's like, you're not forced to roll at a suboptimal time because we won the early game. And really, early game's one of those most important things. So one of my friends was telling me, uh, I was, I, I'm not going to lie, guys. I was struggling in TFT this week a lot. Still am. I am going to try to recover it. I took today and tomorrow off just to grind TFT because I'm like, holy crap. I haven't played this game like that dedicated. I haven't played this game that like religiously in a while. 
Uh, so I was like, I need to put a little change to that. So like, I took a couple days off from work. So I am planning to like grind a lot this weekend. Uh, but yeah, my friend was telling me, I showed him a couple replays of my games and he was like, dude, you're not respecting like the Chosens that you're getting in your shop. And this was in like stage uh, two, uh, sorry. And this was in like stage three at level six and at stage four at level seven. Like he noticed a common pattern in my gameplay where I just wasn't respecting a lot of the Chosens. And I was like, all right, I got to pay attention to what my shops are more often. And obviously that's the name of the game, but it's easier said than done, obviously. Uh, because... A lot of times you're really just looking for specific units and you're trying to roll like 40 to 50 gold in a single turn. You have like, what, 30 seconds a turn or 40 seconds. And a lot of times there isn't enough time to complete everything. So even though there are really good things in your shop, sometimes you don't realize that they're good until you look at it later uh, because you're just tunnel visioning the whole time. So even this game where we did get a ch good chosen, I was still tunnel visioning. Maybe I should have went into a Kale build because I had two Zeeks already and like decent items on Kale. Uh, so that was definitely something that I might need to improve on even more in this particular game. So even though this game's going like all fine and dandy, you, there's still things to improve on in your game. So if you guys want to do like some video reviews of your own games, we do have like a coaching section in our Discord at Bunny Muffins or at discord.gg slash Bunny Muffins. And you guys can go to the coaching section just like ask if someone's free to review your VODs, like completely free. It's all like voluntary. There's also is paid coaching from the guy that I was talking about before who really helped me in my game uh, to respect a lot of the Chosens that I'm skipping in my shop. And yeah, but we do have a free one as well. But you can check out the paid one on my website at bunnymuffins.lol slash TFT dash coaching. Um, it's just like the main link on the top of my website, but you guys can check that out later if you guys want. Uh, this guy has Shivana three stars. So Brawlers did get a buff. And we see the dragon claw again. Like, man, this must be. It's a different guy because I recognize the other person's name. Uh, yeah, I, a lot of dragon claws right now. I don't really know why because the attack damage comps are still really strong. I guess like Kale and the Seven Mage comp is really popular. So the Seven Mage comp, if you guys haven't heard of that yet, hopefully I'll make a video on it this weekend. Uh, hopefully I play it tomorrow when I do like a turbo grind. Uh, it is very powerful with the Relian Soul. Okay, we get. <laughs> We get Blitzcrank Cook. Uh, interesting. And we have Man Immune and Blitzcrank Cook. Not ideal because we don't have a good Man Immune user. Normally, Man Immune, I think it's like fine. Statistically, it's like one of the worst items from Ornn. I, I, I don't really mind it that much. Uh, but Blitzcrank Cook, if everyone's building Quicksilver Sash, which they are in this meta, it's just really not useful. You know, this guy's running Assassin, so it's not going to grab the Assassin. So we grab a Janna instead. Wait, who did he even grab? I didn't even see him grab anyone. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't know what's going on with this Darius. But I guess maybe I'm using it wrong. Maybe looking back at this game right now, I could move my Darius to the back line, and since I have so many melees, I could keep my tanks up front and my damage dealers in the back, maybe, and kind of just hook a target for them to wail on while my tanks are tanking, and then maybe Olaf ults after that time. But I don't really want to do that either because if my Trindamir targets the hook target, he's going to do his dash backwards instead of forwards. And that might grief me too. I, I, it's kind of like an awkward situation now that I think about it. So on this carousel, I grabbed this Dragon Soul on Samira. We have two Samiras already and uh, getting spatula items on five cost legendaries is super, super good. And Dragon Soul fits in our comp because we could get rid of this Braum at a moment's notice. We could run something like Aatrox instead. So we roll down, we hit the Samira, and then we swap out the units. And the reason why we're hitting everything so easily right now is because we are level 9. When you're level 9, that's the best odds for getting 5 cost units. And yeah, that's kind of where we are right now. Uh, one thing to note, Swain does give a healing debuff. So generally, you want to separate your Swain and your Orn as much as possible if you have a Sunfire Cape. Orn, I typically like to place on the edges, same with the Pike. But since we have this Blitzcrank hook, it makes it a tiny bit awkward. Uh, but try to separate your Swain and your Sunfire Capes if possible because, again, Swain applies a healing debuff already by himself, and then so you just don't want to stack them. Let's see what happens here. This is the Azir player and Diana 3. Okay. Yeah, the, the Olaf 2 and Samira 2, it's just too strong. Samira, probably the best late game champion in the game right now. Uh, if you get like 3 Slayer Samira with perfect item Samira, or like six layer Samira with perfect item Samira. 
uh, you're going to be destroying everyone. So if you have a two-star, you probably want something like Guardian Angel plus two damage items or like Quicksilver Stash plus two damage items. I really like GA, and I don't really think the damage items matter that much. Last Whisper is probably one of the best ones, but you can't really get what you want all the time, and just any two damage items at two-star Samira is going to rip through everything as long as they're not playing like four Vanguard. If, they, if they're playing like two or four Vanguard, then like, yeah, Last Whisper is going to be better, but not everyone plays that because... Uh, so many people are playing Last Whisper right now, so a lot of people, even though the Vanguard units are very, very strong, they kind of skip out on them right now. Holy cow, man. This Collector has gotten us so much gold. It's actually disgusting, because we've been winning the rounds, too. Collector is kind of like a win more item. And yeah, we won the game with like 50 gold at level 9. And I wanted Olaf 3, but they didn't really give us a chance to get that. I guess there is that. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this game. I'm going to be releasing a lot of Tristana gameplay. It's still a viable composition. Because, again, as I said before, like, the Tristana guy, I think he got second this game, right? And since a lot of fewer people are going for this composition, you don't really have as much competition when you go for the comp now. So if you do go for it, if you get a good start for it, you're going to be the only person going for it. Whereas, like, before, you'll have, like, three people contesting you. And even though it was better because they nerfed it a bunch of times, like... If you're the only person going for it, you're going to hit the units like 10 times easier. So the nerf doesn't even matter that much. So in a way, it's like a hidden same power level if you go for the that strategy because it's just less contested now. Like obviously, like before there were some games where uh, if you played it in the first week, like no one's playing it and then it's super OP on top of that. Uh, but that time was gone like very, very quickly. Like after a couple days, everyone was playing the build. And yeah, it just didn't really work after that. But now it might be back because people aren't really playing it. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys liked it a lot, go ahead, smash the like button down below. And check out the description for my socials, such as Instagram, Twitter, and all that other good stuff, and my website. So again, if you want the latest compositions, go to my website, bunnymuffins.lol. Click on the tier list. And every Friday, it's going to be updated. So I will see you guys then. I'm going to be updating it in like tomorrow, probably. So yeah, look out for that. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to share and subscribe. And of course, smash that like button. Each like is an LP I gain before the next video.